Hi everybody, Zip here with another premium ship review, this time the Tier 6 British Battleship HMS Warspite. One of the premiums I was most looking forward to because of its history from the Second World War, as well as the First World War, for that matter, one of the few ships to serve in both wars. And the fact that this is just a cool looking design and definitely something that's highly regarded on the PC version of World of Warships. So uh, let's see how she fares in Blitz. And let's not forget my usual reminder that uh, in World of Warships Blitz, premium ships can be nerfed. So do keep in mind that uh, to check the notes because uh, if the ship gets nerfed in the future, I will try to add some notes or do a follow-up review if it's a really bad nerf. So here we go. So first up, we'll talk about the guns, of course. The main guns, they are 381 millimeters, which puts the war spite at the top of the caliber size for guns at tier 6. The 15 inch guns, by the way, if, uh, if you're st still into the Imperial system. Uh, the only downside is, though, she's got four turrets with two barrels each, so only 12 with a 21 second reload versus the contemporaries, um, the Fuso, the Arizona, the New Mexico, which all have 12 barrels of albeit a lower caliber, but the DPM is a little bit in favor on the other ships, um, unfortunately. Her turret traverse base is 4.5 degrees, which is pretty painful. I added the traverse equipment, so 5.4 degrees per second is the resulting value. And this gives it a um, pretty respectable tra traverse. And uh, the range on the guns with the camouflage, the premium camouflage, as well as the elite bonus gives her a 13.22 kilometer range, which is uh, top in her tier for battleships. The high explosive chance of fire is 11%, which I would have hoped for a little bit more given the ship's reputation on PC. But this is Blitz, so of course uh, the translation uh, is to reduce that. But uh, the uh, I think 12% probably would have been the better fit, but it's okay. Uh, I don't think that really breaks everything. Now, the 42 caliber barrel length um, gives her rounds um, plenty of penetration against her own tier or lower, so tier 6 and 5 ships. This ship is at home. But against tier 7, well, 11% HE and the lower penetration on the 42 caliber means that uh, you're going to have some zeros racking up against um, enemy tier 7 battleships at range. But it's still workable. The ship is still very decent. Uh, I'm very happy with the, the guns on the ship. I just wish the DPM was a little bit higher. Now the secondaries, 8 barrels, individual barrels, 152 millimeter which, although the caliber of the guns is good, the number of the guns is not so good, and because they're mounted in the casemate now in turrets, the firing angles are a little bit wonky as well. There's almost no coverage to the rear of the ship, so a destroyer coming from dead behind, the only weapon you have is the mains. The rear guns can reach okay to the back, but not directly aft, and the forward guns can go directly forward, but Somewhere along the line, the first two barrels uh, lose their ability to reach back, and only the rearmost guns can actually fire straight back, but it still leaves a fairly sizable gap, enough for a destroyer to sail in. I really would have liked to have seen a faster reload on the secondaries, considering how few of them there are, and the fact that they don't have high explosive, they only have AP shells. Eight seconds is the reload. Luckily, uh, with the commanders, one of the commander perks that we can add on down the road uh, when you upgrade your commander high enough is a uh, boost to the secondary reload. And you can do it by equipment as well. I tried it. I went back to the main traverse because the ship maneuvers so well you can easily wind up with a long wait to get the guns back on target. So uh, definitely the secondary reload boost is a possibility, but not recommended. The equipment, however, using the commander skill to boost the reload speed, I think that's what I'm going to do when I get to that level with the commander. Now, as for elite bonus, I've gone with the firing range boost. This ship has accurate enough guns that this is actually worthwhile. You could easily go for the ship hit point uh, and torpedo damage reduction, but 
in my mind, with guns this accurate on a battleship, um, not that they're as accurate as cruiser guns, but accurate, notably accurate enough that it's worthwhile adding to the range. The uh, historical camo, uh, which looks quite nice, if uh, if you ask me, the um, uh, it adds a number of bonuses. The firing range being one of them. So with the two bonuses, eight percent increase to the firing range, that gives you your thirteen kilometers. And the camo also reduces the maximum dispersion value, so helps with the accuracy at range as well. So the ship aimed well will deliver. The torpedo damage reduction that comes by way of the camo is also a nice added feature. And the hit point bonus is worth noting as well, the extra 4%, because this ship already has some of the most hit points in her tier. So add that 4% bonus, and if you... Um, uh, change out the consumables as well to boost that further still you can tank quite a bit of damage with this sh for ship skill the warspite only has one rapid reload and two applications thereof although with the commander skill you can move that up to three it would have been nice to see a second skill here perhaps a blitz version of the repair priority from pc or perhaps uh, accuracy or uh, anti-aircraft boost, something else would have been nice there. Now, for supplies, I've gone with the boost to speed, boost to reload, as well as the boost to hit points. As I mentioned before, the ship has a lot of hit points, some of the highest in tier, so boosting that is definitely um, a worthwhile cause, because when you're dealing with large numbers, 3% actually turns out to be a pretty decent uh, amount of damage soaking up that you can do. For equipment, as I mentioned before, I've got the Traverse Boost on here, as well as the two Traverse Acceleration Boosts, the 10% and the 15%. I have tried the Rapid Reload. I have tried the Secondary Rapid Reload on the pr primary slot here, the first slot, and I've gone back to the uh, Traverse. I find, because the ship maneuvers so well, especially when you've got the Traverse Acceleration Boosts on there, that without the traverse boost on the main guns they're always off position and you have to wait a painfully long time for them to get on to target so definitely the i highly recommend uh, putting the gun traverse boost on there for the second slot i originally started off with the 10 percent traverse boost i then switched over to the acceleration and then i've gone back to the traverse boost i do think that acceleration is worth considering but I really like the maneuverability of the ship. It's got me out of a number of uh, tight spots, so I do want that 10% on there. You could go with the repairs as well. I have had a turret or two knocked out, so that uh, would help. But I think that the traverse on the third slot or speed is doable. But uh, certainly traverse gives me, for my play style, the... Uh, the comfort zone of being able to turn quickly, get the guns, it helps get the guns on target more quickly if you can turn the whole ship more quickly, plus being able to dodge torpedoes more effectively. I do believe that the double traverse, both the 10% in the second slot and 15% in the third slot, helps immensely play this ship. Um, again, different play styles may find that uh, other things work for them, but this is certainly the equipment loadout that works best for me. For commander skill, I went with the, for the first and second slots, I went with the repair skills. So the first repairs, damage, powertrain, and steering, and the second one for the guns, both primaries and secondaries. It helps repair them faster. For the third slot, I went with the dispersion reduction and traverse boost. So, uh, so long as your, your hit points are above 75%, which is fairly easy enough to do, uh, I find most of the time in the first half of the game. Then for the fourth slot, I was kind of, eh, I went with the uh, damage increase as you sink ships. And then, of course, the fifth slot, very important to get the extra rapid reload skills. So that, uh, in my opinion, is a must-have for this ship. In the sixth slot, I, I'm probably going to go with the... Um, fire and flooding resistance boost, so get uh, an extra 25 second fire flood resistance plus 1% of the hit points. For the seventh skill, it's kind of a wash. Um, I'm going to go probably with the repair kit cooldown uh, to uh, 
to get that done sooner. The other options are really not viable for this ship. And the eighth slot, it's going to be um, a bit easier to decide. Uh, the uh, fire resistance, I think, is uh, where I'm going to go there. I could go with the main battery reload if you have less than 25% of your hit points. But I'm probably going to go with the 15% uh, reduction in damage from fire. Uh, a lot of people sling uh, high explosives at uh, the war spite. So I think that's the better one to have. For the ninth slot, I'm definitely, as I mentioned before, going to go with the secondary reload boost. In my opinion, that is um, going to be very helpful. And then uh, here we go. Number 10, the rapid reload skill duration boost. This is going to be huge for this ship. I think that's probably the overall most important uh, commander skill for this ship. It's going to help with the DPM, which is the only real weak spot. Your DPM, damage per minute, is a little bit on the low side because of the lack of number of guns. But uh, they are hard-hitting guns, so again, um, it's okay. And it's a toss-up between the high explosive boost because, as I mentioned, the fire chance is low. But it'd be nice to have a boost to the penetration. But I'll probably go with the AP boost, which is going to help against uh, facing Tier 7 battleships. And in the last slot, I'm going to go with the Citadel Strike. Uh, I've already made up my mind on that, just to increase the damage from Citadel Strikes because it's usually a big number. That 6% boost will uh, definitely amount to some nicer damage numbers. Again, helping DPM, especially in combined with the AP boost. Those two together will be a nice double whammy, and more Citadels with higher damage will get the DPM up. Uh, so this ship, with a fully upgraded commander, will be fantastic in my opinion. Moving on to our first battle here. I wasn't sure if I was going to include this battle because it's a fairly low damage game. Because of the low DPM issues with this ship, this is kind of something you can expect from time to time to have happen. Uh, particularly when most of your opponents are destroyers, there's not a lot of hit points there for you to rack up. So the combination of the time it took to get to the first battle here over a minute and 20 seconds as well as the fact that most of the opponents are destroyers and the fact that the ship uh, takes 21 seconds to reload and if not all your shells hit your dpm is going to be low you're going to have some low damage games in the ship so i did want to include this game in the end because of that and it gives you a good idea of some of the maneuverability of the ship because of the torpedo dodging that takes place in Speculating on a shot here on the uh, Mahan. Of course, he's in the middle of turning around, so that was a complete miss. That's okay. Right here, you're going to get a chance to see the mid-range accuracy. So accuracy at 7 down to about 5 kilometers on the ship is phenomenal. I think closer than 5 kilometers, you're going to hit it. You're going to hit it hard. Uh, but mid-range accuracy is one of those things that a lot of battleships will still suffer at. And the War Spite is not one of them. The War Spite has good very good accuracy not cruiser accuracy but pretty darn close to cru cruiser accuracy at that mid-range and um really of course she's only going to be as accurate as you are the auto aim can only take you so far but definitely this ship has the goods when it comes to accuracy at mid-range even at long range as i mentioned before you'll see some long range shots uh, a little bit later on in these battles and you have to practice shooting to be good with the ship but the ship has the the raw materials to be phenomenal for you so if you know how to shoot if you know how to point the gun in the right spot then you are going to definitely do well in this ship here's another example here of what i was just talking about so we've got a burning destroyer i just want to finish her off before she can fire off more torpedoes so i'm shooting here she's already fired the torpedoes and I realized my mistake was firing a little too high here, adjusted and took a shot. I know that's going to hit because the guns are just that good. So I mentioned the turning capabilities of this ship. Here's a good example here. I'm about to be hit by two torpedoes. Turned sharply, very responsive. It was only took one hit instead of two, which is really um, better than taking two. Uh, this ship can maneuver so well. In fact, she's there's cruisers in the game that don't maneuver as well as this battleship. So definitely that is another one of her strengths. You can see here uh, doing a little bit of shooting with the secondaries. Secondaries are accurate when fired singly. If you fire them in salvo, uh, they don't do much. The um, penetration on them is against battleships is 
pretty much non-existent, but uh, certainly against cruisers and destroyers, the secondaries can uh, chip away a little bit while you're waiting for your mains to reload. And here you're about to see an example of uh, why I've decided to add the commander skill for fire damage resistance, uh, because I uh, popped my my emergency repair kit already, so now I've got two fires and some flooding, and nothing I can do but wait out the timer. So um, this does happen fairly often uh, when you're running a battleship and people are focus firing you. So uh, definitely, I think that uh, commander skill is going to be a big asset once I research it. I maybe consider adding the equipment to to help with that fire reduction damage, but. Really, I don't want to give up the maneuverability. The maneuverability of the ship is one of my favorite features of the ship, and I wouldn't want to diminish that in any way. So I'll live with the occasional uncontrolled fire, especially if I can add the commander skill down the road to control it. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And that's um, it's a wash in my opinion. Besides, I wouldn't want to do anything that affects the maneuverability of this ship because the maneuverability makes the ship different than the other tier 6 battleships and in fact the maneuverability of the ship makes it quite fun to operate and to play so uh, definitely sets her apart from the rest of the pack right here you're going to see a, a tight turn about as tight as the ship can go in terms of a, a full throttle turn you can certainly reverse your engines and throttle forward reverse throttle forward to tighten up even more than this but just Putting, keeping the speed all the way up and healing over all the way over to the right side. You can see the turning radius here is quite nice. In fact, it's a better turning radius than the Tashkent, I think. Uh, the Russian destroyer uh, doesn't turn as tightly as this battleship. So um, just absolutely lovely. And by keeping this tight turn going, I see these torpedoes coming in. I just keep going and voila, just like that. I can dodge the torpedoes and uh, get my guns onto this destroyer again. Of course, I run out of time before I can actually kill the destroyer, but that's beside the point. It still demonstrates the turning ability of the ship, which is why I wanted to show with this battle. I don't want to harp too much about the low DPM. It's low, it's not the low west. The low west DPM goes to the Dunkirk, um, which is only just a whisker behind the the Warspite, but uh, the tech tree ships do make uh, over 10,000 more damage per minute than the ship. Not a deal breaker. This is still a very good ship. Just because of the lower DPM, you have to think a little bit differently about how you use her. Uh, certainly playing at range more, use that accuracy at range to start off with. And then mid to late game, move in a little bit closer and finish off some weakened enemies. That's probably the most effective way to play this ship. This battle here is not really the most effective way to play this ship. Uh, you're going to see me get into a spot of trouble here. Um, certainly I'm, I'm starting off this battle with the best of intentions, fighting enemies at range and uh, watching the minimap carefully. And I was watching... Um, another couple of guys on green moving over towards the right so I was uh, moving over to the right as well and then uh, our destroyer friend who was with us decided to pull around and go to the others which is fine uh, the only thing is that in dodging those torpedoes I didn't realize he was moving until it was too late and then I saw that okay well maybe I should go over but I decided not to the, the grass is still fighting there. I didn't want to abandon my teammate. Um, so I stayed on that side, even though I could see that the red team was shifting and the green team was coming up. I figured, okay, well, they'll come over in a kind of a pincer and we should be fine. I made an assumption. I was wrong in that assumption and uh, I get myself into trouble. But this is a great example of because of the maneuverability of the ship and her hit points, how well you can survive or how long you can survive in the ship. And what became of this was basically a delaying action. And I noticed too that the red carrier is right there, 
which means two things. He's a viable target worth 90 points, but also that his aircraft can get at me really, really quickly and back again for many sorties in a short period of time. So um, really at this point, I should have already been turning around. I should not have been continuing on this long. I should have been turned around already and headed back the other way. But uh, especially since uh, but that target, that carrier target is just right there and awfully tempting. But I decided, no, it's too much. Um, there are a bunch of red ships and a carrier that can just sortie and sortie and sortie. So I decided to about face and run and fight while I did so. So that's basically one of the strengths of the ship because you can maneuver so well. You can present the smallest possible target to the enemy, so the backside of the ship, and then swing out and bury your guns when you can. Of course, that is when you're not right along the edge of the map, like I am right here, so I can't actually do that. My guns are trapped on the opposite side. So again, uh, I wouldn't say I'm panicking here, but certainly I'm wondering how the heck am I going to get out of this? The answer is I don't get out of it. The um, so I try to do as much damage as I can and get as much sea room as I can to be able to start to use that maneuverability. I also uh, close the distance on those torpedoes from the ship, uh, from the aircraft I should say. That way I can close in before the arming distance and minimize damage. So I'm doing everything I can here to survive, but uh, it's really four versus one and um getting lit on fire here <laughs> it's really uh quite the quite the show and against um uh some pretty good opponents here as well so uh i will be knocked out the plus side though if you look at the mini map is that my team has all drifted down to the enemy base they're uh, on the enemy base just piling on so we do win through capping which is a win is a win is a win, so I've got no issues with that whatsoever. Would have been nice to get some help, but uh, that's okay. The uh, the green carrier is helping out as best he can, but uh, at the same time, he's got to watch his own uh, his own hit points as well. Uh, I got myself into this this spot, so uh, I should get myself out of it. But here, I know we're going to win because the team is definitely going to be able to cap no problem. There's not a darn thing the red team can do about it at this point, so. I'm just trying to get a little bit more damage in before getting taken out, and there we go. Taken out, but that's okay, because at least the win is secured. I had nothing to do with the win. I just had everything to to uh, do with making a bad call and going to the side of the map where all the red team was and none of the green team. So uh, once our the grass was taken out, but we won, and uh, you got to see a nice example of how much damage you can tank and um, kind of uh, a good example to don't do what Zip does uh, sort of thing um, in that situation there. So, uh, But uh, definitely use the maneuverability to your best ability. When you're in that situation, you can tuck up, show them the smallest target to the enemy, and swing out, fire your guns, then tuck up again to show the, present the smallest target. So that's the way. I've done that on a number of battles. This ship, because of her maneuverability, uh, can do so just as well as a destroyer and a light cruiser. So definitely um, take advantage of that. Uh, swing out, fire, swing back in, just have the smallest target possible presented towards the incoming fire and uh, vary your speed up. That helps a lot with uh, screwing up the uh, those shots from range. And on that note, I'm going to leave it off here. Uh, do enjoy the rest of this battle. I'm going to uh, head off for bed now. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers. Target hit. Fast reload activated.
Our team captured the area. Reload activated. Fast reload activated. We hit the enemy! <laughs> 